Hey guys, this review some more. Back with a quick tech review. This is on the Rosewill brand K85 Neon Mechanical Gaming Keyboard. Uh, as always, if you like the video, find it helpful, please hit the like button and subscribe to the channel and ask any questions you may have in the comments. So the price range on this item is about 50 to 60 bucks depending on where you buy it. New Egg will always have it in that $50 range. May or may not have free shipping, can't guarantee it. So this is New Egg's, basically it's their in-house brand and it's pretty decent and that's about as, as far as I'll go with it as far as the initial review so you're looking at a uh, footprint here of 17 and a half by five and a half inches and about one and one and a half inch depth so a fairly compact keyboard it's not got any extra space to it and uh, overall it's fairly nice it's just for about, I'd say 20 bucks more, you can get a little better. Uh, it has KAIL switches that is spelled with the uh, K A I L H. It looks like it looks like Kaylee or Kali, but it's pronounced KAIL. They're blue switches, and they sound pretty good. Not amazing, but they sound pretty good. Um, the break on them is not very intense. So if you're someone who plays a game and really wants to feel that snap when you're just pressing down or that break you might want to look elsewhere. But right here, here's the sound the keys make real fast. Yeah, so as far as sounds concerned, they're really not too loud. They're pretty modest in how loud they are. They're just just where you can hear it. Um, my on my Amazon Basics keyboard, it's basically a mechanic keyboard with blue switches from a different brand. Uh, they're much louder. These are fairly soft. And right here, we're going to run through all the various RGB elements. Right now, I'm pointing at the uh, pulse speed and the brightening buttons. The right and left switches change how fast it rotates through the uh, the background animation or whatever you want to call it, rotation pulse, heartbeat, whatever you got. So right here you see me speeding it up and slowing it down, changing the brightness around a little bit, dims down, and there it is its brightest setting. And I'm doing all these tests under fairly bright light, so obviously if you keep your room dim, this will be very, very bright. And in fact it is. I'll show you a little later on what it looks like with a relatively dark room. And that's just increases the pulse speed and decreases. I'm about to show you the pinwheel, pinwheel, uh, not animation, what am I talking about? Effect, the pinwheel effect, and effect, and you'll see it go from very, very slow to very, very fast. These are all typical with pretty much all RGB mechanical keyboards like this. They're all programmed in. I will point out at this point, I probably should have done it earlier. I'm not going to do a full blown review of their key binding and macro settings. I just don't do that in my everyday life, so I'm not going to do it here. And most folks that do do it, they know what they're doing anyway, so there's no real purpose for it. All right, so we're basically bumping through here and looking at all the various ways in which you can adjust this keyboard. The, the, all the key items are, are, are the arrow keys are right above the arrow keys. The main ones you're going to focus on are the delete button, the insert button, and the and which will do your basic effects followed by your interactive effects. So right here, you see me pressing on the um, static versus pulsing button. And thankfully, it's all in the manual. And it's kind of nice. You see a little heart shape for the pulse. It'll make like a heartbeat kind of motion versus it being static. Uh, the pause button changes around. After you press function, changes around what, what the color you pick out. And we're just going to run through some of the effects real fast here. All right. So this first full backlit mode is called Streamer. And you're about to see it in just a moment. There it is. It's kind of like a rotating pinwheel of rainbow colors. And then you're going to switch over to Rain, followed by Horse Race, which will look a lot like Rain, but basically going from side to side. Or Horse Race Lamp, is what the full name is. You get Twinkling Stars is the last one. There's four constant effects in the background that you can choose from, and this is Twinkling Stars. These are all pretty typical, or something similar to them will be on most RGB keyboards, so again, this isn't terribly unique. Um, but just running through it, it's fairly, it looks pretty pleasant. It's not, it doesn't look cheap. Like the effects don't look cheap. It doesn't feel cheap. Then we get the interactive effects. The first one, first interactive effect is called reactive. 
Then you get one that's called Water Drop. It'll basically look like a water hitting thing, so it kind of starts in the center and spreads out. Then you'll get Cross shortly after this. I like Water Drop, so I spent more time on it. The colors alternate at random. You can probably set them up with the software on the inside, but I'm not going to bother with that. If you want to go and jump in and do it, you can. And then we get Cross coming up in just a moment. I had to restart it. There's Cross right there. Basically makes a crisscross pattern. It's somewhat irregular. And then we get to my favorite one, which is called Ripple. Basically, it's like a ripple in a pond. So it's, you hit like the H, you'll spread out from the H. It's right there. It kind of shoots out in all directions. Changing colors each time. And then your next one is called Aurora, like Aurora Borealis. Not sure why, it's just a straight line. It doesn't really do much of anything in my opinion. Just kind of, just another effect they have. And the last one you get is called Heat Map. Heat Map, basically, anywhere you type, it'll uh, effectively, like it'll, look, the whole background will start to change color the faster you type. So basically you hit this last one, and it starts out blue, and the more you type, the more it'll basically start doing things. I hit the button again because I'm an idiot. Let's run back through it. Get the heat map, stupid. Come on, there it is. All right, so it starts out blue, so it's cold, and the more you type, the, cha the color changes. So eventually going from blue to red. So once you hit here, it's red. If you let go of it, it'll go ease down to purple. If you type slowly, you'll get to see all the colors change all the way through, and it's just a, yet another, another effect. That's the one I haven't seen before. I've never seen heat map before. Additionally, within all these interactive modes, you can actually hit the uh, scroll lock function button, and that allows you to change the background color within all the interactive modes. So if you press the control function scroll lock, it'll basically cycle through all the various inter all the various colors, and they will stay in place even while you're on interactive mode. So before you saw examples where there was no backlighting, this will allow the backlighting to stay in place. You can cycle through your interactive um, keystrokes. And so you can have like a blue background constantly, but the interactive button thing will still work. So like Ripple, all the various effects will still take place. It will just be with a blue background that's backlit. And this just shows me typing on basically a blue or a green screen. As I type, you'll actually see the effect of the, uh, I believe it's called the reactive mode taking place. So you see the colors changing in the background. So that's what it does. So it allows you basically all from the background a little bit. Just another cool effect. And finally, last but not least, we got one more thing to cover, and that is the side lighting, the side LED lightings. So you want to go ahead and in just a moment I'll do some really, really bad zoom work by lifting up the keyboard to the thing and hoping it focuses, and it kind of sort of does. But it uh, basically we want to figure out how to adjust the lighting on the side lights, and we'll show you that in just a moment. Well, I got rain setting here. Right here, it's the... Uh, the page down button. That's what you're focusing on there. Sorry for this horrifyingly impressive camera work right there, that little symbol. That's the side lights. So you press function, you press the side lights, you see them there, and you won't be able to see it on the camera when you're pressing the button, but who cares? It's just, let's just cycle through the basic colors. There's no real effect to the side lights, as best as I can tell. They just alter in color based on what you're doing. And I don't even think they really are reacting to what the background light's doing. So if you have like the pinwheel going, it's not like the side lights will also pinwheel or anything. So, guys, that's about it as far as the lighting is concerned. Next, we're going to move on and just take a couple look at things I wasn't too happy about. All right, and this last little part where I complain is just uh, one big caveat. This is a keyboard from a reputable company, Newegg's Hatton House brand, Rosewell. So, it's under 60 bucks. That's a big deal for mechanical keyboards, RGB. So, that's about as cheap as you're going to find it from a reputable source. My chief complaint is it's made of plastic. All, it doesn't feel like aluminum for 20 30 bucks more you're definitely getting an aluminum finish here even with Amazon basics kind of stuff and also we got a very 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 cheap wrist rest there which is kind of a bummer overall but um, considering the price point it's not a bad deal 
and the um, major thing I want to take away from this, and finally, it's good for the price. If you can wait a month and spend 30, 40 bucks more, you will get a better product. But if you're just getting this for a kid who's never had a keyboard like this, you don't want to spend a ton of money, it makes perfect sense. Um, but that is just made of plastic, and at this point, I really wish that these keyboards had detachable power sources, whether it be USB Type-C or USB whatever, because at this point, it'd just make it a lot more functional. You could extend them a lot more easily if you want to have a keyboard one spot and the screen on the other. It's just a nitpicky thing, and, and higher-end keyboards tend to have that USB Type-C at this point, especially from things like Corsair. So overall, I'm satisfied with it, but the price point, just for a little more, you can get more. And this is Rose Will's bottom of the barrel mechanical keyboard that has RGB. So this is their lowest little model, the K85. So it's very, very inexpensive. So thank you all for watching and have a great day.